for you create created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful I know that full well my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be how precious to me are your thoughts God how has summed them to together where I count them they would outnumber the grains of sand when I awake I am still with you well today is Mother's Day and we all should should be be honoring the the women who gave birth that they suffered they went through nine months of of pregnancy and uh, they went th experienced labor and that that they did all these things out of love so that our human race would continue that they did so so that their children though the that child that they were forming inside of them would experience love and Today is the day to honor them, but maybe we should honor them every day. The 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 other thing is is this. Okay, so I always I always talk about that that internal and universal energy that um, that surrounds us, goes through us, around us. Uh, and it's deep within inside of us love and the ultimate uh, in in that example of love of course was Mary that she loved God so much that she gave birth to a child that she not only gave birth to a child but she also suffered social ridicule because as is written in in scripture that the unsaid thing that is written there is that Joseph and Mary were not married at the time she first got pregnant that she was an unwed mother. You know, even think about that today. That that there is a lot of ridicule around an unwed mother. That we shine our nose down at such things. It until coming until coming into into the twenty first century. Um, that. There, there were states and provinces that had illegitimacy laws that stated that 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 child, because there was they were born or conceived out of wedlock, that they were bastard children, that they weren't worthy of being completely accepted by our society because 
of the decision made by the the mother to get pregnant. They punished a the child. Not only did they punish the woman, guys. We honestly, guys, we skated on this one. We got out of it because there was no visible sign that oh well, we could get out of it, or that we could we could duck the ridicule by just simply leaving the woman alone. Joseph did not do that. Joseph, he honored the woman who was about to give birth to a child. He honored her. And that's the example I, I want, to, want to discuss. Just for a few minutes. Joseph had enough faith, enough vision, that God was going to lead them in the right direction that even... Even though, yes, as it's written, that Joseph had to be visited by another angel to, to confirm such things. But he still had enough faith in God that he would pr help him provide for mother and child. That he would have what it would take to honor mother and child. That's a lot of faith, man. That's a lot of faith. That is that we've defined faith as being able to see the vision even though there's no there was no evidence of that vision to begin with. All the evidence led to if he stuck with 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 this with this mother and this child that his life was going to be hacked. That he was going to have a hard way to go. And he did have a hard way to go in a lot of respects. Because he had to move his carpentry business out of town. He had to live on the outskirts of, of the town. Where his carpentry business was a prominent thing in town before this. The law stipulated... That because he stayed with them, that he stood by them, that he had to move his town to a less prominent place. And as a result, get less business. That's faith. Mary, she's pregnant divine intervention or not rather you're going to go that way or not go that way that she had faith that she could carry this child and deliver a child that was conceived out of wedlock with all the social ridicule that we even still see to today That she she did it anyway. She did it anyway. She knew that through the faith, her faith in God, that she would be able to provide for that child. That's faith. That's love. To be able to see that vision, even though the, all the evidence is pointing in the other direction. She had faith that God would provide. And that's the kind of faith that, that we should be striving for ourselves. That's the kind of faith that we should be trying to put out there. That show that, that level of faith. That God has this huge loving vision for us. That we will be provided for. That we will find what it is. We don't need to be greedy. We don't need to steal from others. We don't need to take from someone else so that we can have we don't need to fight these long lines of competition we don't need any of that because if we have faith in God God will actually provide for us he will show us a path so that we have our own 
without taking from others. If you think about how immense the universe is, there is plenty of energy for us. There's plenty of love there for each of us without having to worry about taking from someone else. We don't have to have a fear that we would go without. We can see the vision ahead for us because God has it for us. All we have to do is believe and we will see it. I know, I know. Some of you out there are thinking, it's like, Michael, you're painting this picture of, of rainbows and, 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 and nothing but good times. And you're saying that nothing, if I have faith, nothing will ever happen to me that isn't good. That is not what I'm saying. We all have a path to walk. Jesus Christ showed us that by way of walking his own path, that we all have a path to walk. We have to follow that path. He followed that path right on, right on to, the, to the point that he was on the cross. He hung on the cross for us. He, that was his path. That was his path. And he took it. I didn't say he wasn't afraid. Because, hey, he's got, he, was, he, he was flesh. He was blood. He was human. None of us want to die. None of us go without fear of that dying up until the moment it happens. Which leads me, of course, to a another topic. And my prayers and my heart go out to a friend. A friend that we received a message and we were able to see her and express our love for this friend before she passes. That God is calling her home. We got the message that the doctors are saying that she only has moments left. That that she's going to be she, even as I'm delivering this message to you. She's counting down the moments that she has left. She's counting them down. And I'm taking a few moments to, to do this particular uh, sermon and podcast to say... And thank God for allowing me to help celebrate her life with her. That we did get the message in time so that we can go and tell her that we loved her. That she meant something in our lives. And at this time I do want to pray and I want to pray that God you take my friend home to be with you and that you take her home where she knows beyond any other love of yours that you at this moment you're easing her pain so that she can leave with peace that she can leave knowing that all of us who loved her are there. Our hearts, our souls are there with her. And that we thank you for the chance to say goodbye as you take her home with you. Thank you for the ability for us to see and hold faith. Amen.